then let us see the implementation numpy we import numpy now let me just zoom it in can i yeah good so this is numpy matplotlib because we need to draw the graphs definitely and yeah fun animation fun animation because we will try to animate our visualization that will help us give you a good understanding of how the algorithm works now next thing is this is the data set and i have you know i have fetched the data set from case study neural network case study by stanford it's a cs231 course it's a very beautiful course you can go ahead and check it out now the data set looks something like this right now this is where it gets interesting because neural network so this is completely implemented only using numpy and no third party libraries like python just and stuff like so i have defined a neural network class and in here in the in the constructor uh, given in features hidden features and the num classes right i have defined two weight matrices w1 and w2 because we are using oh if a uh, neural network of three layers one with hidden oh shit, sorry yeah so this is it so this is what our neural networks look like so we have two input features and three hidden layers and three classes so three output layers right? output nodes rather output nodes so this is a forward function it's pretty straightforward this is z equals w1 transpose x as you can see over here and this statement is a equals sigma of z which means sigma of z this statement and this one is basically s equals which means the score vector is equals w transpose w2 transpose a which is this one right and we are passing this through a softmax classifier i'm sorry a softmax function because we want to calculate the probabilities scores we got a score vector but we want to define the score vector in terms of probabilities like we want to see what is the probability of each and every class and probability uh, probabilities is calculated by this one which is basically a softmax function and the implementation of softmax as you can see it from here and this is the sigmoid so i hope this that is all clear this is where it gets a little more interesting this is the backward function right self dot probabilities and we are subtracting one from the um white class right and i have this as i already explained in the you know previous slides as so see i'm calculating the diagonal too because we want to calculate see we have two um weight matrices right when one is w1 and that is w2 now we need to update both the weight matrices for that we need to calculate dw2 and dw1 first we will update dw2 because see when we are doing back propagation we are moving from backwards to the forward right so basically we are moving from backward to the forward so which is why first we will update w2 then we will update w1 so in order to update w2 you know to update w2 we need to have w2 first and then some eta then dw2 right so this is what our algorithm is <coughs> so which means we need to calculate dw2 matrix which looks something like this you haven't already noticed so yeah this is the weight matrix so first we will create this diagonal matrix so this diagonal matrix is nothing but uh, with, uh, we are differentiating the loss function with respect to the scores so uh, this diagonal matrix is basically the probabilities is basically the probability vector to be honest so what we are doing is we are just this level function will different the flatten the whole thing flatten the whole um matrix so if revel i can show you the revel i can let me just go numpy revel will just flatten everything yeah as you can see, let me just show an example quite example yeah this is the thing so you have a two dimensional matrix and it will flatten everything here so that's what level does anyway yeah now diagonal diagonal let me show you diag as well so this is our diag as you can see yeah so see uh, when you pass this entire matrix uh, square matrix into a diagonal function it will give you the only diagonal elements right now if you pass this diagonal elements which is basically a fat flattened array into the diagonal function then you will get back the diagonal matrix where the lower triangle triangular and the upper triangular matrix are basically zero except the diagonal elements 
so which is why um, first flattening it which means ravel and then passing that to the np diagonal function that's how i will get this matrix now this thing is like this matrix with three by three matrix where all the first rows is covered by a1s second row by a2s that can be created by matrix multiplication of two matrices this can be created easily by you know, so i have this a vector a1 a2 and a3 right this is three by one i have to multiply this with this vector yes now it works one cross three so this is how i'll create this matrix and as you can see this is what i have done over here and the next step is multiplication of these two matrices which is this one is my diag and this is my a uh, here you go right simple quite simple now comes to the next part which is calculating dw1 now dw1 if you see it looks something like this let me zoom it in yeah so this is what my dw is and this one can be done using the same principle which is basically my feature vector multiplying that with this thing actually right so now this is the thing so this is basically 2 cross 1 and 1 cross 3 and it will give me 2 by 3 matrix which is this one so it's done now the next thing is next thing is what am i doing um, i'm multiplying this wet matrix which is the w2 ma w1 matrix no this is w2 matrix sorry i should have given the name sorry so this is a w2 matrix so i'm multiplying w2 matrix with the probabilities this is the probability vector as you can see and this is what this is basically del a by del z del a by del z is basically i'm differentiating I'm differentiating the sigmoid so del a was so a is basically sigma of z right and del a by del z is nothing but sigma dash right so this vector is can be written as sigma dash one minus sigma dash right so that is what i have done over here in this sentence and this line ah, i hope i was able to explain everything now that that is done so this is the main thing where we compute the model forward pass this is the forward pass and then again we're calculating the loss and then using the backward to update uh, backward to calculate the dw and the dw2 matrix and then we're using the learning rate to update the weights it's pretty simple it's pretty simple you can just simply pause the video and just go ahead and check it out now this will give us something like this this is basically the animation and i can show you real quick so this is how it looks like this is training process is doing and the loss function i have calculated the loss as well and i will show you the lot the loss decreased over the number of epochs <coughs> and i'm just you know that's it is getting very slow I'm just yeah as you can see this is it hmm that's learning that's how neural networks learn actually this is a non-linearity see we have used sigma function which is why you can see this variation boundary is getting curved like getting a bit curvaceous otherwise otherwise in the previous video as we have seen that our decision boundary was simply straight line uh, basically th three different lines you know if you don't know what, what video i'm referring to you can just simply go ahead and check the video in my uh, description below so this is the final output which is quite impressive not that bad and this is the loss and yeah one more thing one more thing in here i have used only three only three nodes but here i have used 15 nodes otherwise if I, and i can show you that if i use only three nodes then that will not perform well you know this well i can i can even simply just go ahead and do that simply go ahead and do that i do pause this one and use let's say three nodes right and then let me yeah now i can restart run all <clears throat> so if i do this then look oh yeah as you can see it is doing a poor job right it still got something like um it classified the white dots quite nice but yeah not quite not impressive that's the thing holy shit. <laughs>
So this is what the loss function looks like. The loss is increasing at, uh, uh, after 1700 epochs. Hmm. So this is this is the thing. So if you increase this hidden features to thousand, uh, this will take a lot of time to compute. But yeah, definitely, if you increase the number of hidden features, then it will definitely fit the curve properly, fit the dataset properly. So that's what uh, this is all about, like building a neural network from scratch. And I hope I gave you some insight how you can build a neural network from scratch. And that this is definitely back propagation is basically sequence of matrices multiplication and the chain rule which i have already shown you using the many many mission i first well, this is the first time i am using the three blue one browns many library it's quite pain in the ass but definitely the animations are worth it all right then thanks for watching adios have a good day